Great, in this video I want you to look at the depreciation handout. This one is going to go over um, the exercises that you find on that particular video, um, that particular worksheet. Um, some of the things that you have to know whenever we want to compute depreciation, we have to know the cost of the item, its useful life, we need to know its salvage value, salvage value is also known as residual value. Um, what that is is how much is it going to be worth at the end of our use of this particular um, product. So in this one, the first one we look at looks, um, we're going to look at straight line as well as de double declining balance for this entry. And it says ABC purchased equipment costing 11000 with a salvage value of $1,000 and a useful life of four years. So, you know, in this, we are looking at all of those things that we need to know. We know that the cost is 11000 salvage value is um, 1000 useful life is four years. So when we look at the um, straight line um, form, what we have to do, we find in the depreciation using straight line, is we will look at the cost minus that salvage value or residual value divided by the useful life. So in this case, our cost was $11,000. We had a $1,000 salvage value and the useful life was four years. So we would have 10,000 divided by four and that is $2,500. When we look at straight line, uh, we have here the four years. So we have year one, year two, year three, and year four. And for each of these years, we are looking at $2,500 is what the depreciation would be. Now, the journal entry that you would have here is the same one that we looked at um, in Chapter 3. And so that is going to be depreciation expense for $2,500 and the other side of that is going to be accumulated depreciation for $2,500. So just remember that is that journal entry that we're going to be looking at. Now the other type that we can do is double declining balance. Double declining balance takes a little bit more effort than straight line does. Um, the first thing that we have to do is we have to find the straight line rate. And what we do to find the straight line rate is we take 1 divided by that useful life. And so in this case, we're looking at 1 divided by those 4 years, and that is going to give us 25% is what our straight line rate is. The second thing we do is we have to double that rate. And so we found that our rate was 25%. So if we were to take and double that, which means multiply that by 2, we would get 50% is our double declining balance rate. So then what we would have to do, um, now with double declining balance, we do not look at our um, salvage value rate. All right, so what we look at here um, is we will take this double claim balance rate. We need to find the book value. Now, what the book value is, is it is the cost minus any accumulated depreciation that we have out there. So any depreciation that has been taken. Well, in that first year, we haven't taken any accumulated depreciation, and so we would have $11,000. So we would take the $11,000, and to figure out how much the depreciation is going to be, we would multiply that by that 50%, and that would give us uh, the 55% hundred dollars. So now we look at our depreciation. We have 11,000 was our cost minus the depreciation we've taken, which is the 55, and that leaves us with a book value of 55. 
So if we have the new book value, um, in essence, what we're going to be looking at here is we would have the book value, and then I would like you to look at your depreciation, and then we would have our new book value. And so that new book value would be that 5,500. We would then take this value right here and move it down. And so then we would have the 5,500 here as our new book value amount. We would multiply that by our rate, which was at 50%, and that would give us 2750. Then to get our new book value, we would take the 5,500 minus the 2750, and that's going to give us the 2750. Um, then we come in and we would take the new book value. It moves down here, 2750. We would then take and multiply that by this 50%, and that gives us the 1375. And then we would have the new book value of um, the 1375. And then that book value would then come down, move down, and we would have the 1375. And then normally you would take and you would multiply that by 50%. In this particular case, we can't do that because our salvage value, so the number there cannot go below the salvage value. And if I were to take all of that 50%, then that would move it down below $1,000. So this number cannot go below salvage value, which means it cannot go below $1,000. So the amount that I am going to have in this area for that last moment of depreciation would only be able to be $375. So a double declining balance, the things to remember is that you don't use salvage value up front, you take the cost up front, but that you cannot go below salvage value when you get to book value. The other thing is that you are going to double the straight line rate and then you would move that over. Um, and so you want to create a chart and use a chart whenever you're looking at a uh, double declining balance. The Next item I want to look at is still looking at um, the same fact pattern that we've had before, but this one is looking at what we either call units um, of activity. It's also known as um, units of production are some of the things that this one is called. And so what we want to do with it is you have to find your rate. And in finding your rate uh, for units of production, it looks very similar to that straight line in that we take our cost, we subtract out our salvage value, and divide it by the useful life. In this particular case, we would have the $11,000. We would subtract out the $1,000, and then we would um, look at the useful life, which was um, 10,000 hours. And so what we would find here is a rate, and the rate is actually going to be $1 per hour is what we would have. Um, so when we get to the different years, so let's say for year one, what we find is that they used 100 hours that first year. So we would take the 100 hours, and we would multiply it by the $1 per hour, and the depreciation for this year would be $100. For year two, let's say that they used 2,500 hours. Well, then we would take the 2,500 hours, multiply it by one, and what we would have is that the depreciation for year two would be um, 2,500 hours. Um, hours and we would do this all the way until we got to the 10,000 hours so we would have to stop um, once we had depreciated out all of those 10,000 hours is what we would do with units of production. Now what happens when we have a partial year 
worth of depreciation. Um, what I'm going to look at is the simplest one, which is the straight line. With um, straight line, what you need to look at is we need to figure out what is the full year's depreciation. So again, we would take that cost minus the salvage value, divide that by the useful life, and we found in that first one that um, the amount was um, $2,500. So the next thing we would do is we would take this annual amount and we would have to divide it uh, by 12 months because we were looking at months here. So in finding the partial depreciation, you would take the annual amount You would then divide it by 12 months and then take and multiply that by the number of months you're looking at. So in this particular case, we're looking at March. Um, so again, this is a case where I want you to use your, your fingers to figure this out. So we would have March, because it started on March 1st, so you'd have all of March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And that gives us 10 months. So from March 1st to December 31st, that gives us 10 months. So in this case, we would take the annual amount, which is 2,500. We would then take and multiply it by the number of months, divide it by 12, or take and do it by 10 twelfths. And that's going to give us an amount of 2,083 dollars 33 cents and that's what we would have there um, let's look at a different month let's say that it was August 1st and not March 1st so then we would start on August 1st so we have August September October November December that is five months so if it was five months I would take the annual amount which was 2500 I would multiply it by five divide it by 12 and that gives me uh, $1,041.67 would be my depreciation for that partial year. And then one last one is October 31st. Um, and this one, October is already passed. So we are only looking at a full month of November and a full month of December. So this is two months. So if I want to figure this one out, I would take the annual depreciation I would then multiply that by 2, divide it by 12, and I get 416.67 would be the amount of depreciation that would happen for that particular partial year. The next item on our worksheet is depreciation revision. Whenever we look at depreciation revision, we have to figure out how much we have already depreciated and therefore how much is still left to be depreciated. Um, the equation that we would look at here is we would look at what our book value was at that period of time. We would then subtract out whatever the new salvage value is and then we would divide that by the new useful life. In this particular case, what we find here is you know we had a cost of eleven thousand, we had salvage value of one thousand, so we would have to figure out how much we've depreciated after two years. Well, if we go back and look at um, those. This is the same problem we've been using all along. So we know that one year depreciation is twenty five hundred. So if two years have passed, that means we have already taken five thousand dollars worth of depreciation. So we would take 11,000 was, was the cost minus the 5,000 in depreciation we've taken and that leaves us with a book value of $6,000. So we would have a book value of $6,000, the new salvage value amount is right here because it tells us that we realize that the salvage value is only going to be 500 and then we would then have to divide that by the new useful life. 
Now in this case, our new useful life amount, our life did not change. So we started with four years, two years have already passed, so we will have two years left um, to depreciate, so then we would divide that by the two. And what we find um, when we do that is that our new depreciation amount is going to be $2,750. Now that is going to be for the last two years. So for year three and year four, that would be our depreciation amount. When we look at depreciation revision, we change the current year and any future years. Um, is what we would be changing under depreciation revision. We don't do anything with the years that have already passed. And the last part um, of the worksheet that I want to look at looks at the retirement of plant assets. Um, so here, ABC is selling a piece of equipment. The equipment cost us $25,000. It had an accumulated depreciation worth $10,000. Whenever we retire assets, uh, we have to know what the book value of those particular assets are. And so in looking at book value, we would take the cost, we would subtract out the accumulated depreciation, and we would come up with this book value amount. You would then have to compare the book value amount with whatever amount you were receiving. So if we sold here this amount and we sold it for $15,000 that means that we would be getting $15,000 in and so that's how much cash we have then we need to look at well what was the book value well the book value was 15 and so we're actually going to net zero on this um, and we're getting exactly what our book value is so we have no gain no loss so our journal entry here, we're getting cash in, so that means cash is going up. It would be on the top for the $15,000. Now we are getting rid of this piece of equipment. This equipment cost us $25,000. So we have the $25,000. Now we're not in balance, our debits don't equal our credits, and that's because when we get rid of a piece of equipment, we have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation that goes along with that piece of equipment. So we would have the accumulated depreciation account for the $10,000. And this is what the journal entry would look like if we ha do not have a gain or loss on the sale or disposal um, of an asset. All right, now sold for $1,200. So what we look at with this is we go through it and we know that uh, we're getting cash in and the cash amount is $1,200 and our book value here was $1,500. So we're getting less money in than what our book value is. This means that as far as our book value goes, we have a loss. And in this case, we have a loss of $3,000. So when we get ready to journalize this transaction, we are getting cash in. Um, cash is going to be valued at that, $12,000. Again, we have the equipment that we no longer have because we're selling it. So that has to come off of our books at $25,000. The associated accumulated depreciation also needs to come off of our books for the $10,000. Well, now you see that our debits are $22,000, our credit is twenty-five. dollars We have a difference here of $3,000. And so this loss on sale or disposal of your asset would actually go um, on the debit side to make this balance out. If you think of it, think of a loss as kind of like an expense. Um, so it's going to have the same type of um, normal balance that an expense would have. Now what happens if we sold it for more than our book value? So we actually are going to get cash in at $21,000. And then we have our book value was at $15,000. So that means that we're selling it for over book value. And so in this case, we would have a gain 
of $6,000. So here we're getting cash in in the amount of $21,000. So that'll be our debit. We're getting rid of this piece of equipment that's at $25,000. We have to get rid of the associated accumulated depreciation, which is at um, $10,000. So now my debits equal 31,000, my credits equal 25. So I need that other 6,000, which was the gain um, on disposal or on sale um, of the equipment. would be that $6,000, so now my debits and credits equal. When you think about the gain, I want you to think about revenue. Um, because those gains are going to have the same type of normal balance as your revenue accounts will have with them. Um, the only other thing I want to look at real quick, um, just to make sure that you understand it, um, is that double declining balance rate um, when, let's say, that maybe it's a partial year. Um, when we have this, so we had the... $11,000, uh, we found that, you know, we were at 50%, and so it was supposed to be um, $5,500 is what we were looking at. Um, so what we want to do um, is we want to look at the partial year. So if, let's say, it was in, you know, March 1st, well, that would be 10 months. So what we would have to do here is we would have to go in and we would take the 5,500. We would then take and multiply that by the 10 twelfths, just like we did with straight line. And the amount that we're going to have is about $4,583. And so with the partial year of depreciation, you would have the 11,000, you would have your depreciation amount, and then you would have your new book value, and your new book value here would be at 6416. You then would take um, that 6416 and you would move it down and then multiply that by that 50%, and that would give you the 3208, and then you would just keep moving it down, um, just like we did before, but just remember that it can't go below $1,000 because that was the salvage value. So that's what you would look like um, if it was a partial year for double declining balance. So I did want to just look at that real quick. That wasn't something that I looked at on the worksheet, but I did want to go over that with you uh, very quickly so that you could see how that actually um, works. Um, so my recommendations to you as far as studying for the test would be to um, work the worksheet, compare it with the um, answer key that I've given you, Make sure that you understand what's going on with all of these. Again, remember that your entry for depreciation will be depreciation expense and then whatever amount you got. Uh, and then it would be accumulated depreciation would be your credit for whatever amount that you had there. Um, so just make sure you remember that because you will have to know that as far as the test is concerned. Anything that you um, get wrong when you work your worksheet, you can go back and look at the video and make sure that you kind of understand it um, in a little bit more detail.